ואדי N5, 4, 3, 2. Holy shit, guess what, motherfuckers? I'm coming back to Canada at long last. My birth country, my mother squeezed me out of her cooch in Windsor, Ontario, across from beautiful Detroit. Wow. Beautiful neighborhood. But now I will be performing in Toronto, September 7th, and then uh, nice. Winnipeg, September 8th. And I'm really, really, really thrilled. Uh, it's been so long, and I haven't been able to go because of COVID, so now I'm back. And then I do comedy works in downtown Denver, Best September club. 14th, 15th. I know, I'm so excited. Sattva Mattress Company. You've heard me talk about Sattva for like, oh a decade only because i believe in this company i sleep on a sattva mattress every night i sleep on the solaire that lights up and vibrates my kids love it we snuggle up and watch movies and and let the bed give us a, a little massage it's just fantastic the the lumen leaf is the first one we got because uh, we wanted a king size bed for a fraction of the cost and at sattva you get quality 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 made in the usa organic cotton but without the hefty price tag why because they don't have physical spaces to rent they don't have employees uh, salespeople who annoy the crap out of you try the mattress for 90 days if you don't like it they'll take it back it's just that simple easy installation setup everything customer services to die for so go to sattva.com slash the shit for $200 off your next sattva purchase again that url sattva.com slash the shit for $200 off your next purchase you guys i don't know if you're familiar with this my guest rick rubin is here everybody clap your hands Hi, everybody so i effortlessly make hits i don't know how i do it <laughs> Just don't know. It's a myth. It's like genius just flows through you, Rick. Yes, it does. I mean, I don't think that. Again, I don't even know. I just get out of bed and then some, there's a knock at the door. Holy shit, Jay Z, come in. And it's amazing. Hit after hit. Yeah, it's, it's for me, it's, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but I. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I know. You press the just button. Just fucking genius. I know. I, I wonder, but I buy it because. I was watching him on Joe Rogan's show and then I'm, I'm listening to his audio book and I'm like, I think this guy is really just this like, hey man, I just flow with the vibes. And you're like, how do you, because I remember, you know, you and I have been, were poor for fucking 15 years. Yes. Remember those 15 years of extreme poverty and yes. stress and I could not be that chill about, hey, maybe I'll be a success. Maybe I'll be poor. Like, no. No. no those, okay, so th there's a philosopher Named, I think it's Arthur Schopenhauer. You heard of Schopenhauer? His? Okay, of course. So his German. Uh, I don't know anything about his philosophy, <laughs> but I do remember one thing in college that that they he said, which is, if it's the most cynical appraisal of reality, which is, don't be fooled if you see someone who's happy or if you see like a Rick Rubin. Those are called decoy ducks who have been placed there by Satan <laughs> to give you the impression that that's even possible when it's not at all. You, will, you can't do that. Thank you. So what you're saying is that inside Rick Rubin is full of the same anxieties and existential dread and horrors that we're full of. But for some reason, maybe he doesn't register them maybe, or express or them. Maybe he's enlightened. I mean, people Ooh. do get enlightened. He lives in Hawaii. He could easily just be an enlightened being who decided not to wear orange robes and decided Maybe. to sort of express himself through music. And he's a direct conduit to God. He could be. I mean, the way he talks in that book about creativity, it. it's pretty like, whoa, yeah. this guy knows some shit. I feel like he is some, I mean, you know, and like in the West, we have this idea of what saints look like or like holy people look like or whatever, but you know, robes, the costume, yeah. but Rick Rubin, I, if anyone's enlightened, it's Rick Rubin. I think so. And I think I want to, I think I want to know him. I want to be friends with him. I do too. I yeah. want to make a hit with him. Yeah, let's do it. Do it. <laughs> you know how cool well, that would be? your hit be, Duncan? That would be so cool. Have you rapped before? No, I try, but I'm immediately yeah, I'm stifled too. by every member of my family. <laughs> <laughs> 
why they immediately stop me. Yeah, yeah. So I can't really do it. Sure. Not in this lifetime. No, mm -hmm. not in this lifetime. Hey, what do you think of the Dalai Lama Frenching that kid? Well, yeah, that is really, like, gr gross. I mean, yeah. like, you, the, 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 um, it's not a good look. I mean, it's the, not a good look. The, what? Yeah. So here's the deal: is that I was, you know, I get all my news from TikTok, and on the talk, the the you know they're, they're justifying it by saying, "Oh, it's a Tibetan joke. It's like take my eyes, take my tongue, and and blah. It's like a joke that you do with kids." I can and I'm explain. Like, here's the Go ahead. Here's the Go explanation ahead. now. Yeah. But here's the problem: I think that in this in some spiritual communities, you need to lead with. Not a good look. Like when, you know what I mean? Lead with that. Like, cause I think like people see that and they're like, uh, and then people are like, you must understand culturally. Here's what's going on. First, you need to say, uh, like yeah. no one want, no one in the West is familiar with yeah. these traditions. And this is a, a, a spiritual leader for the whole planet. Yeah. And so, and, and the expectation that you can sort of assuage anyone's cultural conditioning by saying, well, this is just, you know, one of the things that they do is ridiculous. It's like, I think the first, you know, all spiritual conversations, the first thing is trust your instincts. Yeah. Trust the way you feel. That's how you feel. That's real. Now, all that being said, the, what that represents is something like, it's a, the joke is uh, kids like, uh, kids like asking for candy you know, over and over and over again. And finally the grandparent says, How just suck my tongue. In other words, oh. like stop asking, you want some candy here. It's Ooh. disgusting. You know, yeah, not like yeah. some sexual thing, but just like yeah. no kid wants to do that. It's like yeah. something like that. Gotcha. Uh, um, so that was the gag he was trying to do. Oh. And so that's what that was. It, but the first thing is anybody out there who sees that. Yeah, you're like, and you it's like preface ah, it by yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's okay to, you should feel, that's, yeah. Yeah, and also too, like, I, I was thinking about it, like, I'd be so bummed if the Dalai Lama was a pedophile. He's as not. my my old um, father-in-law would say. He, I, pedophile. I, he calls him a pedophile, <laughs> which is so great. He could never be corrected, and Joe Pesci was Joe Pesky. It was the <laughs> cutest thing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get pedo vibes off of him. I mean, and I feel like we would have heard a couple more instances. That lineage of Buddhism is very square. Like they, they are so square, and the Dalai Lama has been like really ferocious with like any schools of Buddhism uh, that where the spiritual leaders end up doing inappropriate shit. Okay. Like he's very. I not feel like you're dialed into this community more than anybody I know. Yeah, like, I, have you met this guy? No, I went to see. <laughs> I went to see him talk in Anaheim when did. I was on mushrooms. Of course you did, yeah. <laughs> what was that like? Oh, my God. It was so amazing because you have, like on, <laughs> on one hand, the, the Chinese government, they do not like the Dalai Lama. They, like, mm. they consider the Dalai Lama to be a threat, a cult leader, and um, because, you know, they've invaded Tibet and just yes, destroyed yes. this beautiful place. So... Uh, I saw the Brad Pitt movie. I just watched oh, it. Oh, so good. Yeah, so good. Brad Pitt's such a beautiful man. That's the only reason I know you're, what you're talking about, because I saw Brad Pitt <laughs> yeah. do it in that movie. I swear to God, that's how stupid I am with stuff like that. I'm that's like, how I used to know about it, too. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so you have like Chinese picket, picketing. Like you have people who are like out front, like acting like it's Jim Jones or something in yeah. there. <laughs> then you go inside yeah. and like there's the Dalai Lama with his translator and then that's how you can really see like what buddhism mm. looks like because it's this it's alive it's like this in the moment beautiful thing truly radiates just love you could it's like you could just feel love radiating out of this person and he's so funny and but it's in anaheim it's his birthday it's celebrating the dalai oh. lama's birthday so whoever put this thing together had the idea that they would get celebrities to come on stage and thank the Dalai Lama. And so suddenly you have this <laughs> being who's like... like a, well, nothing says spiritual Buddhist quest than a celebrity fanfare or like un bullshit thing. Un <laughs> it's, so like it's like putting shit butter on a Wagyu. <laughs> it's like just, you know what I mean? Two right. of it's the so worst stupid. things gliding yeah. on. So he's... You know, we all just, you just want to see him, you're, you're, um, you just want to hear him talk. You want, you would listen to anything out of his mouth. You just want to hear what he has to say. And all of a sudden, I, I don't even remember who the celebrities were. Um, 
all of a sudden you have these celebrities and s s one of them is going on and on. This is the Dalai Lama. This is the, the, the one of the incarnations of the Avalokiteshvara Buddha of compassion. This is a being that uh, is like the spiritual leader of the Tibetan diaspora, has done countless, like he's given so much to the world. You have this dude up there talking about his career to the Dalai Lama, who has no idea who this guy is, by the way. It's not like the Dalai Lama watches friends. You know what I mean? So right. he's sitting up there and this guy's oh, going on and no. on about his struggles as an actor oh, and on. God. Till out of the audience, somebody screams, let the Dalai Lama speak! Oh. Like, can you imagine like hearing that after you've got him this <laughs> rant like about your boring casting you are. struggles? Oh, oh God! It was a, it was an amazing. I would love that moment. Amazing. And what? How did the Dalai Lama react? Was he like, "Yeah, really, shut the fuck up, you idiot"? <laughs> it was it, it was so beautiful because like it wasn't like he was it wasn't like he's a a dick or anything like that, but. He was being very patient, I guess is the yeah. way to put it. You know, he was like trying to just let this person do his thing. But I think like both he and his translator might have been slightly confused <laughs> about what was happening. Could you imagine you meet the Dalai Lama and your first inclination is to talk about your career in acting and show business? Like the Unbelievable. That's your that's your thing? You want to bring to the like holiest person on earth? I'm assuming he's the most enlightened, and he's just, he's a. He, that's he, what you bring. That's what you bring in front of a whole like amphitheater <laughs> filled with people wearing the, Birkenstocks and like uh, just ready to get spiritualized. Yeah. Oh the my god. The narcissism. Well, it's like we before we started rolling, we talked about. I, I I really get irked when people in in show business pretend like they don't want to be successful. Like how many interviews you've seen where the the actor or the musicians like, I mean I just I wasn't planning on it happening, and then I just got like world famous. And then, and Lady Gaga is one of these. She's notoriously I've seen her give interviews where she's like I wasn't trying to be famous. I was, yeah. and it's like really that's why you wore a meat dress to the Met <laughs> Gala so that you wouldn't be photographed and exp like just take just say yeah I wanted to make a lot of money as a pop singer and I was in art school and I was bored yeah. and I thought this would be an easy way to yeah I mean like just just admit it I, I wanted the attention I wanted to be a star. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah I don't know I, I don't know what that particular why people tell that story i mean maybe they've tricked themselves into forgetting like every single crazy thing they did or maybe they just think oh, their schedules yeah. are normal <laughs> maybe they think it's normal to do like five thousand dates one after the next <laughs> after the next maybe they think that's normal they think it's normal know. to have a publicist yeah right some people right. think that's normal right oh that's true maybe maybe you do like you frame it in your mind a specific way you're like i wasn't trying i was just being myself and yeah like, yeah but trying. you wanted it it's okay to want it's okay to want stuff like that it's okay to want money and success there's nothing inherently evil yes yeah it's weird it's well i think that that that, that in the con global conversation yeah. somehow like you're not supposed to want stuff yeah it makes you it, especially yeah, okay. I, like, I, I, like I love punk rock music growing up, and it was always this thing of like, oh, they sold out. Yeah, what is sell out? And now those bands that I've loved are adults in their fifties and sixties, and they're poor. They're poor because they made bad record deals, and the only yeah. way they can make money now is to tour. And it's like that's really hard Brutal. when you're in your fifties and sixties. Yeah. And now I want my idols to have made money. I I want them to have money so right. they can have a better life later. You know. Right. And yeah, it's like, I don't like, think that's the net that like that that's not smart activism because right. the, the idea is like you've you recognize the inequality in the world. You recognize that you the the gears of capitalism is part of this crazy, beautiful, scary machine where and it grinds yeah. people up. And you see that, and you think I'm going to fight back against this machine by being desperately poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
right, how to right. do it. By, by first of all, succeeding, which is, um, it's Herculean and such a narrow window, right? Like you are a punk band and let's say you, you become a success and you're like, wow, you made it through the eye of the needle. Like yeah. you're there and then you're going to be like, no thanks. I don't want the rewards. No thanks. Whoa. No thanks. And you, I, I, I think a lot of those people have an invisible audience in their head like they have some group yeah. of their cool friends yeah. who are <laughs> so like true. don't don't do it don't make money man you make money you're gonna go you know that that it, it, you're gonna go to hell you're gonna you don't want to respect you anymore trust right. me trust me and it, like their friend is like just shooting up while giving <laughs> lectures on like how to fight back against the machine right. <laughs> look man you gotta just <laughs> We got to stand together against this thing. <laughs> Fuck, the needle broke in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but don't you find, I mean, I've, you know, I've listened to talks about money before we made money, when I wanted to make money, when I was poor. And like, there's this thinking about money is that it is a spiritual thing. Like money can be made into it. It's a, not a spiritual relationship, but rather it's, um, it's an emotional relationship you have with money. It's emotional. Right. And people can get shameful around it or weird around it. Yeah. Well, your parents, you know, it's just your your parents' relationship. It's like this whole horrible chain of sorrow where depending on where your, what your parents had figured out, you know, the whole thing about America is it's, it's some kind of like occult machine that they've (laughs) created where you, you, it's like designed to like has within it this strange possibility just by shifting your thinking and then working really hard, you 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 make this discovery all of a sudden that you don't have to have a boss. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. It, 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 but if you want to have a boss, you can have a boss. It's really weird. Like, mm-hmm. you, you, I'm not saying you just think I don't want to have a boss anymore and yeah. everything gets better. I'm saying yeah. you have to, in, 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 the, in the, you know about this stuff, crossing the abyss in magic. They talk about crossing the abyss. It's this. I don't know that. Oh, yeah. It's like. Um, magic, magic the gathering or actual magic. I can talk about either. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what don't you know, Duncan? God damn. Yeah, man. I don't know math. I'm bad at grammar, but I can talk your ear off about Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, Zelda, <laughs> and the occult. Uh, magic, oh, as in witchcraft? Well, or as in like magician magic, which I'm a fan of all of. I'm not a fan of Magic the Gathering, but of the other two. Like the occult systems oh, sure, have sure, built sure. within them a, a sort of. Uh, uh, Depiction of a kind of evolutionary process. That I like how he's like, you know that, Christina. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think I've anybody does. Your, does okay. anybody know what you're I've knowing? seen your home office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, say no more. Say it's, no more. I'm a fan okay. of the dark sided. Okay. Yes, I am a fan of the dark arts. Yes. Okay. Booty BO. It sounds funny, right? But having it, not so much. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about Lumi, the world's best whole body deodorant. It's clinically proven to control odor everywhere, pits, privates, and beyond for a whopping 72 hours. As an OBGYN, Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Klingman, met thousands of women concerned with odor below the belt. Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the vagina to blame, but bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, a pH-optimized aluminum-free deodorant that actually works and works everywhere with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Special offer, new customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code WMMA30 at lumideodorant.com. I love Lumi deodorant. I love their standard deodorant that comes in the stick, the solid stick one. It's fantastic. It smells great and it stays on for hours. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code WMMA30 at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code WMMA30. All right. Anyway, it's just a, it's it's in all spiritual paths. There's a place you run into where um, it's the Jesus on the cross. Father, why have you forsaken me? It's a place that you get to where you're you you uh 
You have to cross the abyss. Like you have to have a leap the, of faith. There it is. Kierkegaard said, uh, I go to Western philosophy. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kierkegaard. The Kierkegaard, leap of faith. the best. The best. The <laughs> leap of faith, but you got to take that leap. I used, you remember when you were a kid, the high, high dive? Like yeah. You'd inevitably be up on the high dive with yeah. your shitty friends who somehow had overcome <laughs> their fear of heights and were yeah. just like jumping off and you feel that sense of pressure yes, and you yes. have to. And then finally you do it and it's you within seconds you're in the water and everything's fine. Yeah. That's crossing the abyss. But you know, so, it's, so true. it appears in everything and he, in in the capitalism I guess crossing the abyss is that moment where you watch your last paycheck mm. from your job go into the ATM yeah. and now you got to become a hunter gather you've got to figure out a way to make it work that and that is, is terrifying. terrifying terrifying but it's a but it is an interesting transformation for anybody listening to this who are maybe you're considering quitting your day job or whatever to do the thing that you want to do and everyone in your world will tell you that you're wrong that you're foolish yeah they're haters the people that are often closest to you related to you will tell you what a stupid idea that is you'll never make it it's fear-based and most people are living fear-based yes. and to teach your kids this it's so tricky because right now they're in school right so they have to abide by the rules of conformity joy it's all about conforming now and i want to instill in them the seed of rebellion because i yeah you know i i've been thinking about this so much duncan for the last year i would say really thinking about my family and my history and everything and what is it? What is the spark that that creates this of fuck you? I'm going to do it myself, which was the courage my parents had to leave their country of origin and, you yeah. know, do these. What's that versus the person that just goes, no, thanks. I'm, I'm OK. I'm just going to stay here and right. live a quiet life of frustration and suffering. Right. You know what? What makes people rise up and out? I don't know. What is that? That what you're saying, taking the leap of faith. Who takes the leap and who doesn't? Who who jumps off? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, wh what is that? What what is like you? I, it's like the reason, like the Lady Gaga story, is satanic. <laughs> What a great choice of word. I agree. <laughs> satanic. Yeah. The reason it's satanic. That it, resonates. Yeah. It, it's not satanic. because of like, like she's sending, not, it's not the meat dress. It's not some encoded messages in the song or anything <laughs> like that. It's that when you sort of put it out there that you've like, that, that the world just handed you global fame, <laughs> you leave out all the failure. Yeah. And, and, right. And, 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 and it's I, dangerous that way. People, when they yeah. become too failure adverse, yes, that's where, where they would rather like that's sort of true. fester in a sort of melancholic discontent than experience like true failure, profound <laughs> failure. <laughs> You know what I mean? They become failure phobic. True, man. And you gotta fucking fail. Like, and you look at like you look at your so kids. So much failure. It's failure. They have to fail. You don't just get on your bike no. and ride around. You don't get on your skateboard and ride around. You wipe out. You get hurt. You're covered in bruises. You're you're. You, some of them end up in the hospital. I know. So this is if you forget that is the it, built into the growth of any human being. And it's so true. You're fucked. It's you, so you gotta true. Fail. And as a uh, you know, and as the mom, like I, you, you want to protect boys, especially my little boys are wild demons. Same. And I, <laughs> and you don't want them to crack a tooth or break an arm, but it's like at the same time you gotta let them. You gotta let them. Like my boys are yes. doing flips on the trampoline, and every time I'm like, <gasps> you're gonna get paralyzed. And then yeah. I'm like, nah, chances are they won't. Not today. Not today, Satan. You know, maybe yeah. not today. Right. You gotta let them. You gotta let them and let them suffer. It's tough. It's tough. And then know when to push too, because there's a little. Yep. You need a little. Da -da 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 -da. Go go go! Do it go. That's it. I always think of this fucking spiritual leader, this Indian guy. He's always like, he. I'll do his accent because it's appropriate in this situation. He's like the most loving thing. That's Are you good. The most. <laughs> no, I mean. He's like, when the when the child comes to the mummy and she's saying, "Mummy, mummy, on the sorry, pulling on mummy, sorry." That you hit the child. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know. I was like, that's a little severe. Oh, my God. But to swipe, the idea being for mommy to swipe the kid away from your sorry, from pulling on the dress, the apron strings, and go, no, 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 don't cling to me. Yeah. Go on your own. And I always think about that. Like, don't cling to mommy. You can, yes, I'm always going to be here, but 
I'm holding you back somehow if I'm always allowing that's it the clinging to right that's it yeah you've yeah. got it you've got to figure you got to find the balance between those two yeah this is and then once you do that it's you know it it definitely is a, I think a, a naive way mode of parenting to 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 imagine that you are going to be the sum total of everything for this kid no. forever and then feed that fantasy by trying to satisfy every damn thing the kid wants that's no. terrible that is not the way it works because as a parent you know you are gonna die yeah you know that you got you're getting them ready for that yeah. like you got to get them to the point where they're fine without you yeah and you know this is what we every night my wife and i sit in front of our kids and say we will die <laughs> every do you, night do you understand this <laughs> we are melting flesh <laughs> yeah meat's riding off the bone as we speak but do you yeah but my kids are obsessed with death i don't know are they are yours at the age yet where they're like mom are you gonna die when i'm 80 and i'm like mm, probably when are you gonna die? I'm like, I don't fucking. Hopefully yeah. not now. They're getting there. Yeah, they're, they're getting there. What ages are they? Refresh my two and four. Okay, so yeah, they're the the four year old's gonna start getting into existential he, questions. He is. We saw yeah. a dead squirrel. And yeah, just that was a whole conversation about that. Yo, yo, did you catch that episode of Bluey when Bluey <laughs> found the dead bird? Oh, no. yeah. So I, I'm deep into Bluey, and um, it's so it's such a great show. Anyway, yeah, she finds a dead bird, and the dad just lets her have feelings about it and doesn't like jump to console. And I was like, that's fine. That's cool. That's tight. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, this whole thing, like you, you, I, it just is a, a very, two and four. It, 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 in Buddhism, they call it ignorance, Fuck. ignorance. You, you have this entire continuum of human experience and we think that one part of that continuum, you should always be running away from right into the other part of the continuum. And in that you lose half of your human experience right and, and, and it did, deadens the ability to be happy if you yeah, kill the sad that's it yeah the unpleasant yeah you got to feel it all you got to feel it all, it all. Oh, it's so and awful. you have to let your kids feel it all and not try to yes. teach to like tell them oh if you're sad or angry or whatever this is a a profane yeah. state of consciousness or don't be sad don't be angry don't yell at mommy it's like oh dude yeah. Oh, dude. So, 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 fucking two and four. So, I just want to share. I'm super fucking pumped. Is that last night, my kid finally, my youngest finally took a shit in the toilet. Congratulations. I'm, out. I'm fucking out of diapers. And he stopped pissing in the diaper overnight Amazing. for a week, which means you can take that fucking night diaper. Like, I'm officially done with diapers. Congrats. And I'm finally into proper, like, childhood. Wow. And that's. Uh, like to think and I taught these kids how to use the bidet so I don't even have to fucking wipe their asses no more homie like Amazing. mama's out I'm out Amazing. I'm done wiping tushes what kind of bidet you got all right I'll tell you so I prefer <laughs> um the Toto Washlet 350 those are insane you can buy these on Amazon actually the attachment just goes on your regular toilet and you don't have to buy the entire Toto toilet and I recommend these for anybody listening you can get them like look the Toto Washlet 350 that's my favorite model um, I bought the entire Toto toilet for this house we live in. It's not worth it. I would say don't buy the entire toilet. Why? Unnecessary. You can put the washlet, the top bit over a regular toilet. That It's just that that makes it a, a bidet. You understand? So just buying the whole Toto toilet, it's unnecessary. You can put this on a $200 toilet. What's e-water plus? <laughs> It's energy water. It, the Dalai Lama blesses it with his. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, he, really? He ejaculates into the water, what? and then they mix it, and you douche your own anus with his ejaculate e water. No, what is e water? Please, <laughs> I need to know what it. Like, energy what are they water. claiming this shit is? E water. <laughs> what is e water? It sounds bad for you. E water. Oh, electrolysis. Oh, God, of course, it, electrolysis. What lunatic, <laughs> what fucking bidet Tesla is doing these experiments and says, like, I need electric water on my asshole. <laughs> Your asshole knows the difference, though, Duncan. I really wish you would give it I love Credit. bidets, but how bad are your shits that you need to uh, you need to electrify water it before to, you spray it, it in your ass? pH balanced and softened. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're like on the precipice of bidet for sure. We, we have regular toilets. Oh, I, I, I love 
bidets. It's the best. But when you go to a friend's house and they have one, you know, you you almost want to shit just so you can. <laughs> you spray. should bring your shit to my house. I I put them in all the toilets. There's there's no bidetless toilet in my house. It's so it's so it's so, it's so it's so good. For it's a so hygienic. So hygienic. Yeah, you just. You, you know how gross it is when you're on the road. I mean, at least I know it. And you have to mash your caca into your asshole. It's terrible. I go shower immediately. Ari and I both do this where we shit to shower. Shit to shower. I take a shit and then I have to shower. Yeah. I cannot walk around I mean, with a dirty asshole. They figured this out yeah. in most other countries. Yeah. It's normal. You go to a hotel, they've got that nasty hotel bidet in Europe, <laughs> and you're like, I don't know if I want to use this fucking thing. The one where you have to f- remove all your bottom clothing and then hover over it. It's so How weird. How does that even work? I'm, I'm sure we're using it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure people are listening overseas and are like that's not how you fucking do it you but but wouldn't you get your pants because i know you're saying there's two there's there's the toilet and then the bidet next to it so that means you have to what to pull my pull my pants all the way down around my ankles now because otherwise i'm gonna wet my pants and then do i face the wall because the stream is this way don't know i've never really figured yeah i mean this is stupid now i have to take off my pants my shoes my socks because look at this bitch is down there that (laughs) 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 what the fuck is that yeah and then that doesn't even get your asshole if you're a woman because the, the spray is coming from in front of her vagina. So now how is this cleaning my asshole? I want to put wheels on that and I want to <laughs> ride it around my house. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You vehicle. should. So you're two and four. What are you What are you dealing with? You go, oh, fuck, dude, you're in the weeds. This is, the, And then you've got another one coming. Another yeah? one coming. How do you feel? Tell me. Great. I feel great. I mean, I don't, and again, like, I, I, I don't want to be too effusive because I think as a parent, when you do that, you, you Lady Gaga, you know what I mean? You, you can give Lady the, Gaga here. No, I don't want to Lady Gaga. I don't want to give the impression okay. that it's like utopian or anything like that. Or like we, we have any, it's, it's every level of it is happening simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. But right now, you know, when you get in those good rhythms, yes, we're in a good rhythm. It's exciting. So it's really nice. Every, like we've got like a nice pattern happening. The kids are doing great. Good. And you know, when, when that, it's like, uh, the, okay. The other day, we take our kids on a little expedition, and you know, as a parent, when you are taking your kids out, it's complex. Like yeah. one of our kids, you know, you just have to get a lot of stuff together, and especially and put in two. It's like two. the diaper bag, the diapers, the you thing, forget the one car thing, seat, the thing. One component adds an extra ten minutes to whatever <laughs> you're trying to do, and then you're trying to get them. You get them out of their schedule. They're not going to sleep as well. Everything yes. falls to shit. So we. <sighs> We get them to this wonderful playground, and then it happens. You know that thing in parenting where all of a sudden it's like the veil between the kingdom <laughs> of heaven and this reality just rins, and it's like everything's beautiful. The kids, every you yeah. just experience the ancestors are there. Everything is yeah. so beautiful, yeah. and you that's what I, I'm like. Oh shit! Parents are like Sherpas. We're <laughs> we're like trying to like get to this these little peaks, moments yeah these moments where that reminder happens that you're on the right path yeah this is good and so yeah like we've been having those moments and uh and when you realize those moments are possible all the moments before become a little less yeah. horrible and stressful <laughs> and like you know fighty between me and Aaron, you know, it's, it's so it's, hard. It's so hard. And it takes such toll on the relationship between you and your spouse because like before you had kids, you're you're the primary focus of each other's world. I mean, yeah. Tom and I were childless for a good what 7 years before we had kids and so it it really was an adjustment. I think it took about 2 years yes. and then you had you know, each kid changes the dynamic of your marriage even more, right? The first kid is the ultimate bomb. That's yeah. that's a nuclear bomb. Nuclear. The second kid is just a grenade. Yeah. And then I don't know what the third one. Don't know. <laughs> We're gonna don't find know. out. Could be an ICBM. Could be a firecracker. I know. It's uh, it's gnarly. And I think too because I was so driven, and in career mode, and for the woman anyway, like real. I mean, listen. Some women, I guess it doesn't slow them down. It slowed me down considerably. And there is a lot of resentment yes. directed at my husband. Cause I'm like, wait, you're just doing your thing and I'm here. And 
wait a minute, I was yeah. on the same track as you and now I'm dip now flash forward it's seven years later and I wouldn't trade my life for the world and I'm right. so fucking thankful that we had children and I'm happy to stay home more than Tom. I I'm now I'm like, yeah, you go to Europe for a month. Right. I'm fucking I don't want to do that anymore. I'm I'm over it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's all worth it, but boy, did I hate his fucking guts for a couple of years there. Yeah. Okay. Did you <laughs> Did you read Interview of the Vampire? <laughs> You've seen my office at home. Okay. I don't know because I said the magic thing. I, I know. I, I'm sorry. I, no, I I'm a huge fan of Anne Rice. I've read the uh, even the the S and M books under her. Me too. Pseudonym. The Taming of Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> And I didn't even enjoy them that much. And I still was like, I don't know if I can handle all the spanking, but I'm, I'm what's going to happen to her? Yeah, what's so up with the spanking? spanking? Too much spanking. Let's get to the fucking. The fucking. Yeah, Man, so good. I, I got Taming of Sleeping Beauty yeah. when I was in high school. I think I thought yeah, it was a, more of a, it was a vampire same. thing. I wasn't sh- and then just all, fucking. All of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, this is way better than Interview with a Vampire. This is hardcore BDSM. But the... <laughs> yeah. uh, the so... I mean, this is probably a, a stupid analogy, but when you get turned into a vampire, yeah, her description of Painful. what it's like post vampire is this be- everything's glowing, yeah. but the vomiting all of your hu- guts out yeah. and stuff like that. So, I think becoming a parent is the reverse of that in a weird way is it's like you're going from being a vampire to becoming <laughs> human and so you have to puke out all your vampire stuff totally yeah you, you have to give up all the narcissism that you can all the so self-interest true. all the all the localizing the universe directly around you yeah and that hurts that it a, sucks you're puking up all <laughs> this disgusting prideful stuff lots of like i deserve this man <laughs> I was supposed to. I could be a burning. <laughs> you know, you have yeah. to give it all. All that stuff starts f- just uh, flying out of you, and it sucks. And it is about. It takes years for. I'm still pu- every once in a while. I'm still like puke. Still up, puke. Like, yeah. Bleh. Well, it's true, and and especially in like for women, it starts with the co-opting of your body. Like it starts with pregnancy. We become mothers the minute you find out you're pregnant. Yes. It's the the body gets taken first. So that's weird because that that's the first part of you that's just destroyed in a way, in a way and reborn yeah. as something new. You literally get split in half. Your your pelvic bones come open yeah. and a person comes out. You're literally split in half. Yeah. So now you've, you're just devastated from the outside in, right? It starts with the physical and then it becomes the yes. spiritual after the physical, which is fucking weird. Because I don't like, I didn't like that, that it started physically because I'm usually more located in my head than I am in my body. You yeah. know? So I was like, what the fuck, dude? And then, yeah, it become you become the mother, you become the father, and it's painful because you're giving up, yeah, who you were. It's way more painful to become the father, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. I, yeah. Especially for, yeah, I get it. I mean. It's brutal. Because, yeah. like, you know. You have you, to ejaculate. Yeah, yeah. You, I, exactly. I Sometimes you run out of Kleenex uh. when you're jerking off. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, it is. I, yeah, wa- I get it. Man. Being around it, watching it happen to someone you love, like watching Ugh. this, like a, a spaceship essentially is like yeah. landing inside yeah. your wife's pussy. Like yeah. it's a, a, a spaceship it builds in her pussy. Yeah. yeah, and watching that happen and <laughs> all the all the the crazy occult stuff happened. I mean, because I think you can. You can feel it, like a like you can feel the new soul coming into the world, like a, a rising sun. It's it's a, a new energy. Is like just is, yeah, is, is like radiating out of them, and they're puking, and they're they get y'all get pregnant, get sick, pregnant? all the time. How, how far along is she now? We are almost there. We're like what? real <gasps> close now. So, are you going to invite me to the home birth? Or yeah. What's up? No, oh, you're gonna invite everybody. Well, we are. It's uh, stream. Where's the kid? We are actually streaming the home birth on OnlyFans. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's gonna be hot. We got surprise <laughs> guests. We got surprise guests coming. It's gonna sure. be a lot going on. That's there. exciting. Thank that's you. Ex- you have celebrity guests talking about their careers. Yeah. Well, the birth. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually me. 
I'm going to sit next to her and talk about Just my talk. career while she gives what birth. And we're going to see who, like, we have a way to see who's paying it to more <laughs> attention to who. I think people are going to be really interested in my comedy journey is what I'm titling it. Huh. We're titling <laughs> the birth <laughs> Mike Tuck comedy journey. It's going to be a big hit. That's so rad. So, no, I'm being serious. Though. Do you guys do like, are, are you guys like hippie leaning? Or do we do hospitals? What are we feeling? We did hospitals for two, the first two. Yeah. We went through that uh, hell. Yeah. And it is, you want to see the true indictment mm. of Western medicine. Mm. It's the way we bring mm. babies mm. into this universe. It is fucked. You, you, it's like you tag them. They put a low jack on babies. They do. I guess they must have been stolen a lot. They put a low jack on the babies. They better be stolen. They're based on the way they treat a newborn baby, they act like like people are climbing in the windows. Like they have to like knock them off with brooms out of like because they act like that baby is like a a, yeah. a brand new like very expensive watch that I they have know. to just, it's crazy. But and then, it's crazy that someone makes money off of selling that baby. I mean, you really have to be a big piece of shit to sell babies, right? I, I, the assumption is you're selling them. I think it's That's eating them. <laughs> we don't know what they're doing. Like, Could what is delicious. the thing? No, I, th I, don't, I don't understand why people steal babies. That's I don't know. Is it a thing? thing? Is it really a thing? Yeah. How often does it happen? Why is it on the news more then? I don't know, maybe because of the LoJack system that they do now. But I imagine, yeah, they sell them. Don't they sell them to other people? The There's fuck a baby. Wants to buy a baby. I know. That's what I'm thinking. It's the worst thing. It's the worst it's the wor investment. It's not yours. Yeah, I know. What are you gonna do? Like, what do you even? What's the idea there? Wait, hold on. Are you really against hospital births? Like, are you guys no, just not treated bad? I'm not against Western medicine at all. Oh, I, I, love I, I mean, it medicine. saved my life. I know. But, but I. Uh, I feel that what gets left out in a lot of hospitals is the wild, beautiful love that comes into the room when a baby is born, the mystical reality. That's true, yeah. The aesthetic of hospitals is so grim, I generally. Know. And that's you want that to be the first thing your baby experiences is a bunch of like like yeah. five or six people doing infinite tests on the baby I know. and 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 you when you you know become familiar with the how much they're charging insurance companies yeah and you realize that crazy. every single test is a withdrawal from oh, the yeah. bank and you so you see that there this isn't just about making sure the baby's okay there is interest and in profit here yeah. And so at that point, it, uh, you know, I, you can become pretty cynical about the system. Now, as far like I have nothing against like surgeries to take bullets out, uh, you know, all the other great stuff. Yeah, that, that should be a bummer. Like that should be a bummery experience because you're you're indifferent to the experience of that. Really, you're just trying to live. But I agree. Like at least make the maternity ward a, a little more hospitable to welcoming new life. Like yeah. maybe, yeah, I agree. Like colors in the room, maybe, yeah, or just. Colors just don't, something don't softer, treat nicer. the woman like a like it's like a robot. I've heard awful stories, especially from people wanting to do home births, and they end up in the hospital and they just have horrible experiences. It's like, yeah, why do you have to be such a mean cunt to this lady who's clearly suffering? And well, panicked. And, they're they're you know? tired. They're the fucking nurses are exhausted. They've I been know. like dealing with like death and God knows what else all day, and you know. Then they're bringing that energy into the room. Oh, I know. Because how do you not? And so <laughs> it, it's just, it, it's a mess at hospital. <laughs> I remember when I was pushing out my second kid and I was like, dude, I feel like he's on, he's on deck. Get the doctor. And she's like, are you sure? He only wants to be here, you know, right when it's happening. And I was like, yeah, just fucking tell him it's coming out of me. Yeah. And I remember like I wasn't pushing fast enough for him. And every push, they were disappointed. They were like, oh. That's what. I'm and I was like. <laughs> But I, I was kind of on board because I was like, I don't want to be doing this either. <laughs> like, let's get this kid into the world and chop, chop. I want a nap. Yeah. But I remember them being bummed out. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. I, I could have been worse. It's the worst. And then, yeah. so yeah, we are not a, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the whole. So, so will you do like a birthing tub in your living room? Are you going to do a tub? Or are we going to do? We're going to do tub. Okay. And now I don't, I'm going to, not to be a complete dick. 
I did not talk to Erin about how much of this she wants to talk about. So oh, I probably okay. so won't let's keep not. talking about it. Talking. Sure, sure. I know she's f uh, comfortable with like what we're doing, but I don't know how much Say no more. we want to go All into right. details. Oh, also, it not. ruins the OnlyFans. <laughs> you want to see the kind of tub we're using? OnlyFans.com forward slash my comedy career. Sign up now. You will get... <laughs> <laughs> we are sending out special NFTs of the placenta. Ooh, that's exciting! And yeah. can you are you going to make them into capsules and sell those online as well? Yeah. Thank you to for mentioning Aaron's that placenta. Yeah, if you yes, we will have these wonderful capsules <laughs> mixed in with cinnamon and premium kratom. <laughs> premium kratom. This is specially harvested. <laughs> Ethically harvested <laughs> kratom. You can do that. I don't. I don't know if you're gonna make capsules out of placenta. I, w women do it. They love to eat their placenta. I, I hear it's very nutritious. Um, I don't know. When I gave birth, Tom. Tom goes. I was like, "Did you see me pooping?" He's like, "Babe, no." And I'm like, "Just tell me the truth. You can tell me." He's like, he did. "I didn't." And he he swears that he doesn't. He goes, "But I did see the baby come out of you." And then he goes, and then a bunch of other shit came out of you. I'm like, That's cool. <laughs> a bunch of other shit. I go, like, what? He's like, I don't know, just fucking blood and shit and stuff. And I was like, That's cool. Oh my That's God. such a cool descriptor. It, it is a blast. Just of, a bunch of shit. It looks like what you would expect, like a, a, a meteorite really? from an alien to look like when it crashes into Earth. It's just a splatter of primordial essence that's like rad the hey can we google it i want to see a birth yeah let's look at it let's look at the end result i want to oh and he's not having this already i can see the look on his Me? face, I, no, saw the look I, on your face. I, I think i'm the only one in the control room that doesn't care about this no about birth i think it's beautiful i no, think yeah. it's beautiful too now you are going to be streaming this that's good are you going to invite your parents to be in the room no <laughs> that's the worst they're dead Oh, that's right. You're both I'm dead. I'm going to have to do a summoning ritual. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is dead. My dad's probably going to die soon, too. I'm sorry. No, no. He's not in hospice or anything. He just doesn't lead a healthy life. Here we go. Here we go. Live birth, natural. Live birth, colon, natural. Natural. Okay. So, so Mia is the <sighs> owner of a day spa. Fast forward. Let's go. Which no one cares about the spa. Time. Let's see the volcano of life. Mean. Uses to contract our transition from this is what you're gonna experience pretty soon. Pushing the baby down and what out. Happened? I want to see the vag the though. Show me the is actual. Increasing and just a certain force is now really behind. I want to see the shit baby coming. coming. baby there, it is. there we go. I remember this. Yeah, I remember this. Oof. There Look is this that. baby. Sami Siraj. Oh, I didn't see the bunch of shit coming. Placed immediately on his mother's Aww. chest. That's the best. Dad cuts the umbilical Fucking cord, dad cuts and the it. midwife collects some of the cord oh. blood for routine testing. It's not over oh. yet. Isn't that the best? Deliver the <gasps> there it is. There's a bunch of shit. presses on the fundus, the upper part of the uterus, to check how much the uterus has contracted. Applying pressure is a common practice Ugh. used this by This part's the worst when they like sew you up and. Blood. Samia tore along mm -hmm. the previous episiotomy line, yeah, yeah, and I her midwife too. repairs it with stitches, which yeah. take 15 minutes Fuck. to complete. This part's the worst, actually. When you're like in shock, like all this comes out of you, and you're shaking. Samia is and they sew your cooch up. That's right there. That's it. That's Incredibly, the nice moment. In an hour, she is showered up and savoring some crazy? well deserved fettuccine Alfredo. Yes. It was a fast delivery oh. with just four oh, hours buddy. and 11 minutes of labor. Samia's natural birth Damn. is Wait, a success. Wait, how long was it? How long was it? Four hours. That's really fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could see it was like, look, she looks great. Like for that's like a short labor. Like instead of having to do it forever. Isn't that crazy that you're just up and walking? Like right. I mean, I gave birth, and I remember the minute that epidural wears up, she's like, "All right, stand up, go pee." Now and you're like, "Wait, what?" Crazy. And you're like, your insides are still shaking because your organs are all like falling down back to where they were before and you're like oh. it's, cra <laughs> so it's crazy it's crazy that that y'all can do that it's crazy you would think you'd be in the hospital for another like four months or something right? after a thing like that you think that they would let can i can i ask you a serious question yes. do you think that 
in a set in a way that we're all morphing into one race eventually because we're all fucking different continents, different people. We're all going to yeah. be one race. Do you think now, especially because of like trans this and that, people are becoming more comfortable with being the other gender. Will we morph into seahorses where you will both you will be both genders? Whoa. Yeah. I just thought about that. That's pretty wild, man. Like I Yeah. I never like it I could never happen. thought because right now we're going to a genderless society. In a couple of generations, we could just be seahorses. Are seahorses time travelers? <laughs> <laughs> Is that us? Is that what happens? We just like mer we merge into both genders right around that time. <laughs> someone figures out how to like build a time machine. It, it it cuts a slice in time space, creates some infinite loop. We all like wake up floating in some ancient primordial sea as seahorses, Whoa. and then we just do the whole fucking thing over. Whoa. Are the seahorses trying to warn us? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but seahorses are both genders, right? I don't. I think they are. I think they're both male and female. But that's what I'm saying. Like, do you think you will have a dick and a vagina in two two iterations, three iterations of your DNA? You could. They're both See, male and female. Well, I think that well, that in the in your prognostication, yeah, you're still humanizing more than you like i think what's like you're oh. you're making us still like gen like you're making us more human than we probably are going to be I, I, I think it, it would be more like um it's gonna i mean i don't I, what the fuck do i know but uh i think it's gonna be more like we become um tentacles or appendages of oh. that, that that sort of radiate out of the the super intelligent ai that's coming to the planet forgot about ai i we forgot connect, about ai we all connect to that via some neural lace yeah meaning in other words like well you might be yeah. male or female but because you're you're sort of plugging into the earth mind still i'm still see, in that old you don't, time you simultaneously mind. become every human who is also plugged into that, meaning that you're everything, all experiences. Wait a minute. That's crazy. We can all plug into the collective consciousness yeah. now with AI. That's where is that what you're saying? Not yet. We're gonna. But probably. I would guess. I would say that's definitely in the cards. Oh, that's wild. Once we figure out how to translate emotion and, and, and sense perceptions into some kind of code that can be decoded and put into someone else's brain, then you can just, then the internet is gonna be the internet of feelings. Oh my God. Yeah, you're gonna, like ASMR videos are gonna be feeling videos where you're like, I wanna, I wanna feel what it's like to have a horse spray jizz all over my <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the first, right? They always have to develop pornography. It always leads the charge on That's the new porn technology. will be feeling, feeling, feeling porn. Feeling porn. Oh, that's kind of cool. I could do that. Me too. Yeah. It's going to be cool. But in, in that jizz. sort of connectivity, I'd say that, there, that within that, you're also looking at like, you know, all kinds of mRNA, God knows what gene editing therapies that allow you to shift everything i saw to. that in the uk they just did it they had the first baby that was edited with dna they quietly i saw it, on, it listen it was on the telegraph where i get all my news besides tiktok in the uk it was the first baby where they did like selective genetic whatever oh they did do that i thought yeah. that they were not allowed to do that or something i thought first baby born using dna, oh, from, DNA from three, three people. people wow yeah Crazy. How what, is there a limit to how many people? Is it, can you <laughs> do a, like a thousand, a million? <laughs> it's a gangbang. It's a DNA. Can you? Could you go Jizz. like theoretically take all the DNA at 23 oh. and me and convert that into one baby? That would be kind of cool and take like the best properties. But what? Mm. And more news. <laughs> Most importantly, Barbie is now Down syndrome. Barbie, have you seen that? No. And will you be buying Down Syndrome Barbie for your children to play with? I'll buy it for my personal collection. I collect Barbies. So do I. I could see you as a doll collector. You got to come over and see my dolls. <laughs> they are beautiful. What do you think? She doesn't look, how do I say this? That, I mean, down it, enough? Yeah. I, I don't think that that is a, 
I look, I, you know what? I think it's great. I'll tell you why it's great. Yeah. yeah you, you know, these kids, like, I, I have a friend whose kid has Down syndrome, and it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, it must be really, like, a bummer to only have dolls to play with that, like, you know. Aren't like you at all. Yeah, yeah. it must be. A, that's That's cool. Also, I don't, yeah, I agree with you. I think they should have, like, like, if I was doing a video game and there was a sort of slider to, like, towards down syndrome would have put it up a little higher for the damn thing it's like don't try to ride the fucking fence on this <laughs> yeah i agree are we gonna go full inclusivity or not then let's do it yeah what are let's you doing go inclusive. Don't, no but this is a this is a marketing meeting where like yeah. some compassionate <laughs> yeah. no doubt a parent of a kid who has down syndrome was like why don't we try one and there they and probably showed what they wanted it to look like and then like the yeah. marketing guy's like that's too we kind <laughs> of are hoping that maybe some people won't realize that, that, that <laughs> what the what is what happening here like, and they'll just think it's another kind of barbie because so. it could it could be skipper i don't know if you remember skipper barbie but it was like her young sister who had no tits and looked like that kind of shorter and not as tall and what necklace is that thing wearing <laughs> can we go back and look at that necklace what symbol is that what the fuck is that hey, can, can you zoom in on that it, that's a that's a new world order <laughs> that's a new world order symbol it's right there look, oh, there you go that's it that's a symbol uh, of the, 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 the... Yeah, what is it? It's like a, a satanic... W-E-F. <laughs> that's a W-E-F tentacle bear right there. Uh, tentacle bear. Look at that. Yeah. yeah, what is it? It's a it's a Christmas tree that's not quite I don't know Christmas what tree? that fucking necklace is, but that's the worst part of the Stupid, dog. Stupid, yeah. to take that thing off of I agree. there. It looks like a leash or something. It's distracting. I got two questions for you. Number one, would you, eat, would you try human flesh? I would try lab-grown... Human flesh. Lab grunt. So a human that's been kept like a veal in a lab? No! And, and massaged and beer fed? Yeah, yeah. I like want that, my... Like no. cruelty? Basically, here's the only way I would eat human flesh. Sure. Number one, the baby has to be like grown in a laboratory <laughs> and placed in a very small plexiglass okay. sort of aquarium, like a kind of Skinner box, but sure. for making like really good human flesh. Yeah. And so... Uh, yeah, I, I would want the pretty much just like a rice and like very clean <laughs> diet. I'm not opposed to the 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 meat being allowed to watch some shows, but I want them to be like <laughs> ma mostly positive. And then educational I would, programming, then like eat. number blocks. Then I'd eat. No, I would you, never eat regular human flesh. Do you think right now there's Illuminati type groups that love eating human flesh, and um, like right now? Like somewhere there's some dark room and there's a group of men eating meat, like eating human, human, and they love it. And it's like their jam. How many people are on the planet right now? I know. I think about that. The probability dictates that, yes, right now somebody's doing the thing. Uh, yeah. It, and it, but as far as like some like, uh, I, I would say that if we're going to look at like people consuming human flesh, we could expect it more in like some hardcore mm, Eastern, Eastern European, European yeah. BDSM style complex yeah. where they just want to break every possible cultural. Uh, is, but, but, you know, I had this guy <laughs> on my podcast and he pointed out like if you look at all these uh, like stories that pop up in the uh, zeitgeist regarding like the Illuminati eating human flesh or whatever, it's like it, it's, it's more of like a kind of metaphor. And so then, yeah, people are eating human flesh. Like the people eating mm. human flesh are the people who are like the, the executives making. I'm I'm not saying a CEO shouldn't be richer than fuck. I take pleasure in knowing like Jeff Bezos is floating around in some pleasure <laughs> yacht doing like some kind of wild ketamine and like God knows what else he has access to. I'm, f but. I think mm. that if you want to look at like truly eating human flesh, it would be mm. taking people, hiring people, and then paying them way less mm. than you need to pay them. In other words, like you could still maintain a lifestyle of like super yacht, excellent ketamine, infinite <laughs> sex with anyone you want, sex sure. androids, access to the sure. hollow earth, whatever the fuck it is you get up there. Sure. And pay people better so in fact what would be worse would what would be worse like having one piece of human flesh bacon mm. or slow cooking entire legions of employees who you're extracting their life energy to convert it into your super yacht 
Oh, what is man. you know what I mean? I that would be saying. worse. That's a form so, of human consumption. So an ethical on the ethical plane, or the you're saying it's pre equal. I'm saying that when I eat human flesh, mm. it's on a special occasion, and it's not <laughs> babies. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you would eat it as bacon because i was thinking that you know in texas we're so good at barbecue yeah you could really barbecue someone up real nice there's a reason yeah. the texas chainsaw massacre <gasps> exists because right. somebody made that connection somebody went to a little right. little barbecue shack in the in deep Texas and like that idea for the movie popped into their yeah. head because they're eating and they're like, I wouldn't know if this was human flesh or not. Sauce is so good. Sauce can cover up anything. Anything or bring out some of the great flavors <laughs> that you can find in human flesh. <laughs> it's a whole line of um in, in the conspiracy universe, that's a whole thing is like, yeah, you know, tell me about that because I am convinced that, that right there is a there is a universe where we talk about these things, right? The idea is like we don't know what meat we're eating. So it's like when you go oh, and order no. whatever food it is from any fast food place, do you really know that came from a cow, a chicken? Maybe it's actually cheaper to to harvest human flesh and sell that instead it's of It's way cheaper. Way cheaper. It is way cheaper. You can just go kill homeless people and we could be eating the homeless right now. There you know they disappeared too in Texas. I don't know if you noticed, but they're gone from Austin, more or less. Where do you think those people went? Oh my god, I wonder if the day they all disappeared if there was that barbecue smell in the air <laughs> everywhere. Like all of a sudden it's like, what is this? Why is everyone barbecuing today? What's going on? Fourth of July homeless harvest we know that a fourth of july homeless harvest a harvest you know i <laughs> would nothing would surprise me no, honestly no. nothing would surprise me to find out whatever the thing is nothing would surprise me it, I, I don't know i like I, I i would probably yes people are like eating human meat in some kind of like temple under the earth right now that's so crazy okay and my second question is if you had to be homosexual would it be with brad pitt Absolutely. Yeah, I figured that was a hard. Hey, are you? Uh, that was easy. Uh, Sorry, I know. Why did I even ask? Are you, you really? Fun? Oh my god, it'd be so great. But it's got to start with some kind of cool road trip. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. I want him to like. I want it to. I want him to seduce me. Okay. Like I want there to be a sense that I would that I'm like really on the <laughs> on the like. On, I don't think I would. I don't think I'd, I'd have sex with Brad Pitt. I don't know. Mm. And he's like, look, let me just take you on a cross country <laughs> trip. Let him romance you. Yeah, I want to get romanced by okay. the pit first. But yeah. yeah, of course, Brad Pitt for sure. That would be your homosexual choice. Or yes. Be, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You just threw it out there. It's Why kinda... not? But is there anyone else on your list that you'd be oh, gay with? Oh, fuck. Um, yeah. Uh, probably, uh, what's, oh God, I can't believe I can't remember. He's like one of the greatest actors. There Will Be Blood. What's his name? Daniel Day-Lewis? Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, he's so your type. I see that. Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, he's strong. He masculine. makes furniture. He's like, look, come out to Italy. <laughs> Help me make some furniture. And then like I we're in there making like and like the like handcrafted <laughs> furniture. We're both sanding. But he's like he's I like good it. at it. And he's like so good at it. And, yeah. he, and he's got muscles from sanding. <laughs> And then, and I'm not good Wait, at it. And, it, and it's hot because it's summer. And it's does he take hot. his shirt off? And then he's sanding, and you're no, noticing the I musculature. No, I make a mistake. I sand oh, the wrong oh. against the. I sand the wrong way on this thing he's been working on. Uh, uh. He slaps me, <laughs> and then he, you know, grabs my hair. And then we're like, he's like kissing me. He's like, I work for you. You're on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he fucks you to teach you a lesson. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Like tears for sanding this wrong. I just yeah. I'm so exhausted because like all night yeah. we've just been getting high. Like he's been giving me like <laughs> acid all night. I'm just so exhausted, emotionally exhausted, confused that I just confused. I start I start yeah. weeping because <clears throat> yeah. I have respected the furniture that I just fucked up. Yeah, and yeah. I'm I'm ashamed. I'm, and then he like kind of like he like it's, it's okay, it's okay. And then he pushes my head. <laughs> into his lap and like i just have to suck his dick that's the 
Day yeah, Lewis. and you're confused. You're just like, yeah, I get it. That's a good one. I like the element of like, I'm just tired and I'm not really in control and like, he's mad at me, so I kind of have to do this thing. I like that dynamic. That lends itself to, yeah, that's exciting. I like that. Yeah, that I mean, was really good. Duncan. Why Brokeback Mountain was a hit. Oh, right? that's true. It's like, know, it's the torture. We have to do it this oh, way. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like you're a magnet, and, uh, but I'm repulsed. But oh, God, let me eat your ass. Can I tell you how shallow I am? Whenever yeah. I watch that movie, or um, I always think, God, they're so smelly. Aren't they so smelly? Because they're cowboys, and they're just, yeah. ugh. Like, there's no soap. There's no cleaning of the balls. It's not or, shallow. It's disgusting. And then whenever I watch period He's same. I'm like, oh, their breath and their assholes and their pussy stink and everybody's fucking all the time, but they're smelly. Game of Thrones. Oh. When he like humped that, <laughs> what the barbarian, wait, what are they called? The people from beyond the wall. And it's just like, I think they Oof. actually put them in a hot spring <laughs> because they knew everyone, if they just had like sex out there on the ice, everyone would be disgusted. <laughs> Bits of, of Game of Thrones, like shit stuck in yeah. their long barbarian ass pubes. Oh my God. But do you think they got so used to each other's smells that maybe they didn't notice them back then? I think they just got that horny back then. But you're just you like, know, you're fuck just, it. I don't care. Like, you just expect to smell shit. Yeah. Were people going down? Like, was like oral sex as much of a thing back then? <sighs> well, every time I watch one of my dorky medieval type shows, yeah, apparently, like, they're always sucking and licking, and, and I'm like, oof, dude. But did that really happen? Let's Google it. Did they give oral? Yeah, in, in medieval times. Medieval times. You know? Because Henry and the Tudors, my God. They probably did. They're always licking beavers, and you're like, dude, that... No, there are no traces of oral sex in there the you documents. Go. There you go. That's probably why. Because they're like, I'm not. It's disgusting. Yeah. It, there. Were, I mean, I don't even like making paper back then. Was like a was like getting paper was hard. Getting right? paper. Yeah. You oh yeah. You couldn't just get toilet paper. And there was no soap. There was no antibacterial. So that's why women died in childbirth. It wasn't until I forget some German guy was like, yeah. "Hey, why don't you wash your hands in between delivering babies?" Yeah. And then women stopped dying yep. as much. <laughs> Yeah, and he there was pushback. <laughs> there was pushback with that guy for real. Cause like really? Yeah, the, the like gentlemen do not wash their hands. <gasps> Ew. That was a saying back then. So like it was You're kind making of, that are you making fucking with me? No, I am into that. You're that, so you're so convincing. I can't. No, tell that, I read that. That guy ended up in a mental asylum. Nuh uh. Yeah. Like he he went crazy because he like had come up with this very obvious solution. <laughs> That when he tested it out, it was working. And like the medical establishment at the time, they were like, you fucking quack. <laughs> wash our hands, wash these hands. Just covered in cadaver slime. Right. Just, just filthy, just, oh, just covered in nasty shit. Mm -hmm. And then just delivering a baby with those hands. And of course the mom dies. Right, because, yeah, they were delivering, the deliveries would happen on, on surfaces where they had just had cadavers too, right? That was the other bit. They would they would do birth and death in the same plate. Yep. Well. Cool. Wow. Anyway, this has been quite a journey. I can't thank you. I <laughs> okay. love chatting with I you. I know you're my absolute favorite. And Likewise. and guys, get the OnlyFans for the birth of the, yeah. Duncan's next child. Yeah. I you, check out my Twitter. I will be <laughs> posting sneak peeks. <laughs> So excited for that. You always bring such interesting vibes. Uh, thank you for bringing your wisdom today. Thank you. And good Thanks luck with this next me. kid, dude. I, I have a feeling I won't be seeing you as much uh, once that baby's born for the first three months. Or you'll be least, seeing me more. To get the fuck out of the house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See? Typical dad. Yeah, I love you. you. You're the best. Thank I you for having you. me on your All show. Right. I love you. Shake on that. All right. Bye. Until next time. Stay bye. cool, moms. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.